it's Gina at Tarot and Time. I'm here to give you a tarot and astrology reading for the week of June 14th. So there is so much going on. I'm just going to focus on a couple things and um, then we'll jump into the tarot cards. So as you know, Mercury is in retrograde. Mercury, the planet of communication, how we express ourselves, um, it rolls roadways, travel, all that good stuff has a backwards effect on us right now. We're coming into the last full week of retrograde, and uh, I feel like I exhale just saying that aloud. So one more full week, and so let's take advantage of the positive things that retrograde offers to us. It offers us a little bit of a pause. It offers us a chance. I like to write down what has been going on over retrograde so I can see what the theme is. I find personally, I have a Gemini moon that's ruled by Mercury. I find that things come out of the woodwork for myself during retrograde. People come out of the woodwork, information comes out of the woodwork. Um, things that, I, I've said the quote, um, the unseen becomes seen. I find that some things click into place a little. So. I've taken my notebook out and I wrote down May 29th when retrograde started, what was going on? Just a couple quick little blurbs. Um, I thought I was doing fine till about June 2nd. So things start, kind of kicked in. I was like, oh, here we go. I'm not gonna get away free on this one. So have fun with kind of jotting down, seeing what's been going on. And then this week, Mercury is gonna move back over those things that have happened. So. Um, pay attention, see what the gift is, see what the lesson is, because Mercury is communicating with us, right? It's, it, it rules communication, and Mercury right now is also square Neptune. So we're in Gemini season, which Mercury rules Gemini. We, are, we have Mercury making a square with Neptune, the planet of, I think of it as creativity. Um, very, very foggy but great ideas, uh, more like dreamy, creative, artistic ideas that can come up. And so this is a great time to be writing, writing, writing. And so all this Mercury energy going on. Uh, we just came out of a few days of the moon also being in Mercury in Gemini. So it's been a lot. We also just last week had a new moon in Gemini and a solar eclipse. So in a new moon, it's a great time to, to write your wishes down, ask for what you want to grow as the moon grows. And the solar eclipse is thought to be when something is brought to you. So pay attention to what's coming to you, what ideas are being communicated to you, uh, artistic ideas, great time to create. And then pay attention to what's been going on over retrograde, just little journaling about it is kind of interesting to do see what you've learned now I want to talk about Mars moving into the sign of Leo so Sheila Height was talking a lot about that in her astrology report for the week um, I encourage you to listen to those they're fabulous so Mars is moved into this dynamic because it was in a sign of cancer before, so a little bit more mellow, more nurturing, taking action in the home, taking action in how to nurture yourself and others. Now it's moved into the sign of Leo, and Leo is ruled by the sun, and it's very much about yourself and your heart. So this is a real spicy time. We can either Go at it from the idea of it being passionate and fiery and dynamic, or it can go into a lot of fighting and arguing. So choose passion, choose uh, dynamic, romantic, all that kind of energy, creative, and really take a pause from arguing because you're really not going to win, even if you're right. So uh, Mars is going to be in Leo for about six weeks, so great time to uh, take a few deep breaths. So Sheila was talking about what amends do I want to make to myself because it's the heart chakra, right? It's Leo uh, really self looking at yourself and with Mars is how you take action. So what are you holding on to? How did you hurt yourself? 
How can you forgive yourself? This is a really great time for that to really look at the role you've played. We've all played stupid roles sometimes, and we all carry some old stuff around with us. So let's lighten up, let that sort and sift through it, and let it go. Use that Mars energy, take the action to clean, do some cleanup around the heart chakra. So choose love, be love. Let that energy of the eclipse, what, it, what was brought to you, let it be the, love and that you share that with others um, so be good to yourself listen to the truth that's coming up um, I think of Mercury square Neptune as all those things that are kind of foggy and mysterious or unknown can start to be communicated to you and it might not be verbally it might be through your dreams or through thoughts that pop into your head or you know people from the past that come in that help us realize that we still have a lot of forgiveness work to do of ourselves so take advantage of this time um, i picked some cards here i i have this deck in front of me isn't that beautiful that's the sun card in this in this deck the everyday enchantment tarot finding magic in the midst of life i love this and it's just such joy, no matter what's going on behind her, she's just glowing. And so I'm kind of using that as a theme picture for this reading. I picked a rose quartz here just because I think of it as such a love, uh, self-love kind of stone. So we have that here, I have a rose candle. And then I chose for the piles, I have pile number one, I'm using the sun. This is from the, um, why am I, oh, the light seers. So there's a beautiful sun. I, I'm picking things that are associated with Leo and the sun um, because we're talking about really clearing up that heart energy. I'm envisioning yellow light, just kind of beaming through, cleaning up that area and letting yourself off the hook a little. Yeah, you might not have been right or you might have been right, but there, whatever hangups are there that you're holding on to, this is a great time to let it go. And here in New England, it's so warm and sunny. So getting some sunshine uh, would be really good for you too. Here, pile number two has the sun. This is the tattoo tarot. I love the mirrors kind of reflecting out of the sunflowers. So you can take a real clear look at yourself and see it, the flaws, the, the positives, all of it. It's all part of the package. It's almost like putting a bathing suit on this season. That's, that's what it is, and you've come a long way in life, and love yourself. The mirror work. Pile number three, I've got this beautiful strength card, which is associated with the sign Leo, which is ruled by the sun. I love that she's half lion. She's petting this lamb. She's so strong, but so gentle, and I feel just a freeness in her heart. So go ahead, pick your pile. Let's get started. Pile number one with this beautiful sun card from the Light Seers deck. Talk about open, just wide open. Okay, so let's see what you need to know this week ahead. I'm working with the Light Seers, the Relative Tarot, and the Tattoo Tarot. And let's see for this week ahead to get through the last full week of Mercury retrograde. I have the Ace of Pentacles here. Now, I'm thinking of this as in the heart position of the reading, and there's this beautiful yellow golden light that I was just saying about uh, envisioning yellow golden light around your heart. There's something new coming in. It's the Ace of Pentacles, something valuable to you, um, a new way of presenting it. It's a light, there's a lightness to it because there's, it's a one. So I'm seeing it as like this freedom that you're getting. And you know, the sun is card number 19. And in numerology, we would call that a 10. And we break that down to a one. So in a way, we're working with two fresh starts here. This glowing energy of clearing and lightening and forgiving and really valuing yourself, being kind to yourself, 
forgiving yourself. Here's the judgment card. It's card number 20. And this really, I mean, talk about a card of forgiveness. This is Scorpio energy, I think of judgment card as, that deep, deep down emotion. And all this stuff from the past, there's all these like bodies rising. She's blowing the horn there. They're responding to it. It's time to lay the past to rest, especially in relationship with others. Card number 20, it's a two in numerology. There's time to lighten up, to bury the dead, bury the old thoughts, properly care for them, forgive yourself, and move on. Because the next card after uh, judgment is the world. So it's a card of success. So you can do this. This is the final, final bend, and you're going to feel a lot lighter afterwards. Here's the moon coming in in the foundation position of the reading more watery judgment is Scorpio energy very watery the moon very uh, Pisces some people think of uh, the moon card related to Pisces and tarot some say cancer but either way it's water energy and so she's kind of just like responding to the flow of the moon and the stages it's a full moon here and just kind of going with what's coming up, the feelings that are coming up, and there's this lightness, this freedom, um, like you're being supported by the water. So the emotions are there to be processed and released. We have Nine of Wands coming in in the background. Fabulous, taking action. You think about Mars and Leo. This is such a Mars and Leo kind of card. Look at her expression. So it's almost like the uh, fences, I think of like the fences that were holding you in. No, you're not, it's not holding you anymore. Just the two of swords. I love this two of swords. It's so Scorpio to me with those crows. It's swords as air energy, so it's very Gemini, very Mercury. She's blindfolded. She's being pulled ahead by these crows. Take another look at them. And so they have that deep knowledge because I think of crows as like the messengers. They can go into all the realms. They can go into the underworld. They can come back up. They can communicate with humans. Um, and that coming in next to the judgment card, such Scorpio energy, allow yourself to be this you're being moved through this deep emotion and you're going to be freed and you're working in relationship with something bigger that's leading you through it here's the knight of pentacles interesting it's like almost like a um, monument success and there's a keyhole there and it's interesting, it's like at the pentacle right here, right next to this ace of pentacle. So what the work that you're doing now is like things that you're gonna remember later. It's it, There's a monument built for it. There's something big work happening here. You're gonna be freed. And here's the five of wands, five of fire. 2021 is a five year, year of change. So this is a very applicable card to the year. Things are going to change. And it's these wands with all these new buds, there's something new growth is happening. Get rid of some of this old garbage that's not no longer needed. You've outgrown it. You forgive yourself, you free yourself. And it's almost like I don't even feel like you have a choice here. Like you are being pulled in this direction. It's, an, it's enough of kind of just getting caught in the emotion and just being stuck in it. Just like sinking in it. That's over now because the energy is ready to be used differently. Let's see, let's pull a couple more Where are you, direction that you're moving in. The Knight of Wands and the Queen of Wands. How lovely. The Knight of Wands, you're typically seen as a male. This one is a female playing hand drums. 
this horse in the background it's just so dynamic so exciting she is not being held down by old stuff absolutely not and the queen of wands is like a mature version of this knight of wands she's having fun she has the light almost looks like beam of sunshine in her hand she she knows joy so great week to start just cleaning up uh, emotional cleanup week for you jot down what's been going on since may 29th pay attention to what's been happening in your life what's coming up what wants to leave what new thing came in for you during um the eclipse what were your wishes what have you been wishing for and think about that even if you didn't get a chance to write your wishes down i'm sure you have some in the back of your mind what have you been asking the universe for and it's almost like I'm getting the impression like I know when I go shopping I like to bring new stuff in and ideally get rid of two items I no longer really like so this is like you're swapping up here you're bringing better things are coming in you get a clean clean house great week for it have a great time harnessing that Mars passionate energy using it properly to bring you joy excitement passion and just opt out for the fighting okay have a good week thanks okay i'm here with pile number two i have this beautiful sun card with the mirrors and the sunflowers so beautiful really taking a really good look at yourself it's with just with the acceptance look at the sun's facial expression so calm not making any judgments okay let's see what we have for the week ahead for you we have the queen of pentacles another calm face just kind of savoring it all taking the time that you're that you value yourself enough to slow down to take the little meditation the nap the she certainly has a beautiful chair there she's out in nature and she's savoring it your heart is craving that that's coming up in the heart position of the reading yeah this is what you've been doing the nine of wands been getting a little beat up overstimulated trying to carry a lot trying to be everything for everyone and it doesn't work this is the week to be you for you and i hope it goes longer than this week i hope you take the whole six weeks of mars and leo and make you the focus and i bet you everyone else is going to be so happy for you and see such a shift in you and feel so much love from you as you choose yourself then when you're around everyone else you're so much more joyous Here's the seven of pentacles, kind of sprouting right out of the hand there. Your spiritual path, power to manifest, the power to create. You've got the page of cups in the background. I think of him as like all about fun. And I always kind of got a little confused on this card. The deck is... I love the light seer so much. This is probably the only card that I don't really feel a strong response about, about initially, except that there's a pig flying up here and there's this rising up. There's this little hands in the background making the shape of a heart. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> so there's like this, this just need to do things from the heart and then also like when pigs fly like is that how often you do something for yourself like is it that rare because that really needs to be looked at here's the king of wands and he is all about himself he wants to go he would be like a leo king he's got great clothing he's ready for an adventure he looks like he'd have the best stories to tell so this is important part of who you are, is to not just be the one who's constantly just exhausted. This is an exhausted card versus 
him. What a difference. Okay, let's see what else. There's the Five of Cups and the Fool. Okay, this sounds silly, but I'm seeing it as simply as it's time to go do a little shopping. He's wearing his tattered clothes, Five of Cups, kind of just looking at what didn't work and kind of stuck in that little bit of poor me stuff, but there's two cups behind him that, that are being overlooked. So it's coming in next to the Queen of Pentacles and this exhaustion card, and I'm just seeing it as simply as you need to choose you and go have fun. Maybe it's, maybe fun is shopping. Maybe it is. There's enough. You're sprouting pentacles out of your hand. I think you can afford to go shopping. Go buy yourself a few new things that you like, that you enjoy. Go and have fun. Just wander. And know that there's like there's just a shift of perspective. And when you step away from all of this exhaustion stuff, you'll start to find that others step up and can start to, they can do more than they're doing. It seems to be a theme here. I, I talked a lot about this last week too. Then you have the Fool. And I love it. I love the Fool. It's such, it's an Aquarian card. And it's, the whole premise of tarot, the fool goes out on his or her journey and, and you know, to some it looks like, what are you doing and what are you crazy kind of energy. And that's the way that you live a big life. You have to go out and just have these adventures. So basically, I just want you to choose yourself. I want you to be kind to yourself. I want you to take the time to go sit in a comfy spot outside and take some breaths of air and relax and just step away from the constant burden. Your heart is craving it. It's screaming for it. Be kind to yourself. I feel like there's an issue about looking in the mirror and you're going to have to move past that. It's like do it anyways. You know, I, I, I have fear of, tra of flying, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm, I'm a world traveler at heart. So that's not gonna go away. I'm not gonna wait for it to go away. And so I want you to start stepping up and being kind to yourself and just going and doing things like sitting outside, taking a nap, taking a meditation, taking a day where you say, I'm just gonna go where I wanna go. The fool, the fool doesn't always have a plan. He follows his intuition, he follows where he's being guided. And so go, have some fun, Buy yourself something, know that you have enough, even if it's something simple and small, it's symbolic that you're choosing yourself. I'm gonna pull two more cards just in case there's anything else that needs to be talked about here. The Emperor, so Mars, he's sitting on the planet Mars. Let me show you a picture of that. Look at that, look at him. Mars is his seat. And it, I was talking about the Queen of Pentacles beautiful seat here. So you gotta get comfy. Maybe you buy yourself something comfy to sit and relax and do maybe some outside meditations. He's holding a chess piece. Maybe it's time to pull out a, a game that you like again and harness that passionate energy of Mars and Leo. Be kind to yourself, love yourself, see yourself, accept yourself, all the flaws. It's bathing suit season here. It's time to really just look at yourself and love yourself anyways. Take action where you can to make things better, but don't let it stop you from having fun. Shift your attention away from what's not working and look at all that is available for you. I'm gonna pull one more card. The moon. All the stages of growth for that lobster, different moon cycles. It reminds me of the expression, it's just a phase. We sell t-shirts and face masks here that say that. Things are gonna change again. And in this phase, I want you to choose you and be kind and have some fun. Have a great week. Pile number three, we have the strength card. So beautiful. This is one of my favorite strength cards. Leo the lion, but gentle. Okay, so let's see what we have for you. This last full week of Mercury retrograde, we're gonna shift up our attitude about it and just find the gift in it. 
What's coming up? What are the messages coming up? What are your dreams telling you? There's something going on there. Well, you're starting off strong with the death card. Look how beautiful that is. This is my favorite death card. Well, one of my favorites. So strength followed by death, and it's also called rebirth, and I love that it has um, an infinity sign in between it, which really is associated with number eight, Death is card number 13. It's referencing the strength card, card number eight. So there's this death and rebirth, this cycle continuing on. And so this is, we're talking about clearing up the heart chakra and letting the things that no longer serve you, the guilt, the burden, the lack of joy, let those things just die off. And there's a new you being born. It's very exciting. Here's the Ace of Swords. It feels so, it's so hypnotic to me, like going back. There's a lot of things. I feel like your energy gets really caught up in the past. Interesting, I see another infinity sign there. So almost getting caught in this loop. Loop, loop, same thoughts, going back. This feels like going back lifetimes. Um, and there's a new approach available where you can be a little bit more present. There's a time and a place to go back and I don't feel like now is. Now is a time to lighten, lighten the burden, lighten the thoughts so you can live more joyous in the present moment. Here's the page of swords. Looks like he's a knife eater here. Sword, circus kind of act. So yeah, I just feel like you're just like regurgitating, re, Putting those thoughts right back in, it's just become like a um, dramatic show, which is so Leo. And so now it's time to shift that energy. It just feels a little too dramatic and a little too painful. Okay, the Emperor here. So the Emperor is ruled by Mars, so we have Mars and Leo. So he's there to help push through, take action, to stop this loop of the same thoughts, to move forward, to go through this rebirth, to have, to end this way of thinking and behaving and acting, because it's really harsh on yourself. And um, I think that there's more kindness that you can give to yourself. So the Empress is here, she's ruled by Venus. She wants you to be kind to yourself. She has a beautiful crown on, her hair is beautiful. She's wearing jewelry, all those Venus kind of things. And she's pregnant, she's giving birth to something new. And so this is the time to give birth to the new you, to let yourself off the hook a little bit, to be kinder, to not be stuck in this loop of thinking that's outdated. Here's the hanged man, wanting you to look at things from a different perspective associated with the sign Virgo, which is in astrology, Virgo is the house of health. So really this is for your health and well-being, to let yourself off the hook, to transform, to let the past go a little bit. Here's the King of Cups. I think of him as a great therapist. Like he knows how to deal with emotions. He knows how to not get too deeply involved when he doesn't need to. He knows how to help transform emotions. And this is kind of reminding me a little bit with the Ace of Swords here, like therapy or almost like hyp hypnosis therapy where it's like taking you back, helping you heal so you can move forward. And so if you, maybe this is a good time for you to think about therapy. Maybe this is a good time for you to find something alternative that works for you, something maybe like hypnosis. So I think of Virgo as the house of health, the house of herbs, alternate, alternative medicine, so to speak. So maybe this is a good time to start looking into that, to help give yourself a little support. Mars is there to help you take action to move through. Uh, some of this past stuff and to be kinder to yourself and you also you have the strength card there so you have the strength to do this maybe just a little assistance would be great um, okay so let's see if there's anything else a couple more cards we have the four of cups and the devil card okay so the four of cups in both cards you're being there's a hand coming out offering you something 
In this one, you're, you're kind of fixated on the Three of Cups, joy, satisfaction, the party, and there's this new cup being offered to you. It's a cup of satisfaction is what I think of it as, and taking that pause. So again, kind of going back to like, maybe switching the attention, maybe with a little assistance. And then the devil card here, you can see this man kind of being pulled by the strings. And so the devil is ruled by Saturn, which rules anything below the belt. So it's all that old stuff, all that stuff that we kind of push to the side or push down because we don't have time to deal with it. And this week, it's, the energy is asking you to bring in some help. So you've got this. Have a great week. Thanks for joining me.